Hello and welcome. Meanwhile, I continue to work myself through this insane hardware haul. If you don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to watch my previous videos. And today I am going to step away from the usual path and take a look at something what is not retro at all. This NVIDIA GTX 770 was among that hardware and it seems to be dead. And bringing that hardware back to life is part of the story of this channel too. Furthermore, in times where GPUs are scarce goods, it would be a shame just to throw it away, so let's see what's wrong with it. For testing, I will use this ASUS Socket 939 mainboard with a dual-core Athlon 64 and 4GB of RAM. I kept this board especially to test PCI Express cards, which the GTX 770 is. Well, first problem is that my workshop PSU, which I usually use for retro hardware, is not capable to power such a beast. You see, this card needs a strong PSU with external 8-pin and 6-pin PCI Express power cables. This card pulls most of its power through these cables, and not only is my workshop PSU too weak, it also lacks such cables. However, I have here two Molex to 6-pin PCI Express adapters, which I can use with the PSU. I'm not going to make any stress tests with it, but I hope it will be enough to at least power up the system. Well, kind of. As I said, this GTX 770 needs one 8-pin cable and one 6-pin cable. However, I have only two 6-pin adapters and no 8-pin one. Um, I know that the 8-pin cable is 6-pin compatible and I heard that some cards do actually work, even if you connect 6-pin cable into the 8-pin port. I guess we will see it soon. Okay, everything is connected, let's try to uh, turn on the system. Yeah, just as expected, it refuses to start completely. Um, I know that the mainboard itself is absolutely working, so this is a sign that there is a short somewhere on the graphics card. I already made a visual check, and the card doesn't look to be damaged or something like that. The card is uh, covered by a cooler from one side and a metal plate from the other, so I have to disassemble it to be able to make some measurements. The cooler seems to be held in place only by these four screws. Let's clean the thermal paste with some alcohol. The backplate is held on the PCB in place by multiple screws. The card is very long and heavy, you can clearly see how bent the PCB is. But a bent PCB is usually a sign of loose connections and not shorts, so I guess this is not the issue here. And here is one suspicious scratch from a screw. Looks like someone was already here. At least this scratch doesn't look like it would come from a factory. Well, who knows. Let's see if we can find a short. First of all, I'll test the external power connectors. This is the pinout of a 6-pin and an 8-pin GPU power supply connectors. So, 6-pin connectors seem to have no shorts. And the 8-pin connector has no shorts as well. So, external power supply seems to be not shorted, at least at the first glance. This area here is completely powered by that 8-pin and 6-pin connectors and is basically responsible for the complete GPU and memory power. The internal PCI Express power is supplied through this small part in the front of the PCI Express edge connector. Here is the pin out with voltages only. The first three pads are 12 volts, 
the fourth one is ground. As you see, the slot bracket is grounded. The first three 12 volt pads have no shorts to the ground. This is ground. This is ground again. This is 3.3 volts and it is not shorted. Aha! Uh -huh. This is so called 3.3 volt aux and it seems to be shorted. As far as I know, this voltage is used for standby and power saving management. And this seems to be shorted indeed. So, I just tried to find out where the trace is going to from that pad, but unfortunately it goes here away from the edge connector. And on the other side it ends up just in a wire. So, unfortunately, I don't know where the trace is going to. This is a multi-layer PCB and the trace will take its way somewhere inside through the PCB. That's a problem because since it is shorted to the ground, I can't use my multimeter to find a point where it comes to the surface, since all the ground points look the same as the shorted 33 volt aux trace, so it can be everywhere. Off camera I checked all the capacitors and ICs in this area and they all seem not to have any short so far. Testing every tiny part could take forever so I'm going to use a technique called voltage injection with the hope that it will reveal the shorted part. Just a brief explanation of how such a voltage injection works. You connect a power supply to one point in a shorted circuit and set voltage to the expected level or slightly below. The current, on the other hand, must be set as low as possible. You need a benchwork power supply, where you can precisely set up voltage and current levels. Furthermore, such a power supply doesn't turn off when short circuit is detected and tries to keep up the current. A good ATX power supply would for example instantly shut down and bad ATX power supply would just stand in flames in a couple of seconds. So, during such a voltage injection, the current will be pumped through the circuit and the shorted components should get hot after a while. To increase the effect, the current can be risen in small steps until the broken parts gets hot and reveals its disguise. To be able to attach the power supply, I will have to solder a wire somewhere on the card. As I told, unfortunately it is not clearly visible where the 3.3V aux trace is going to, since it disappears inside of the PCB. So in this case I have no other option but to solder a wire directly to the edge connector. It is usually not a good idea, since the contacts on the edge connector are gold plated and the solder on it decreases electrical properties, but since this card is dead otherwise, I guess it's better to have some solder on the edge connector than to have it wasted completely. So here I have my benchwork power supply. As you can see, the ground is already connected to the slot bracket. As I previously said, it is part of the ground on the graphics card. And here is the wire where I will connect the positive voltage cables from the power supply. But before I do so, I have to set up the values first. As you can see, it is set to 21 volts, what probably would kill the card instantly if I connect it as is. So let's set the voltage to 3.3 volts. For the start, I will set the current to 50 milliamps. It is as low as I can go with my power supply. Ok, time to inject the voltage. As you can see, as soon as I connect the power supply the voltage drops to almost zero and the power supply reports CC. It means constant current mode and indicates that the load attempts to draw more current than the setup limit, which is currently at 50 mA. Let's see if something already gets warm. It actually shouldn't yet, since the current is very limited, but it's better to start slowly to avoid any damage. Ok, from the other side everything seems to be cool as well. Let's rise the current to 100 mA. Everything is cool. Let's go for 200 milliamps. I still cannot feel that anything gets warmer. I'm also trying to go with my fingers over the card from both sides, but 
there seem to be nothing yet. 300 milliamps. Still nothing. Okay, after a while I'm now at about 4 amps, actually quite a lot of current, but this is usually the value where things start to happen. I still heavily advise to start low and work yourself up just as I did. Don't just go for 4 amps directly, you could fry your hardware. Anyway, in this area the card gets quite hot, so let's take a closer look at what we have here. So these two capacitors seem to be our suspects. And indeed, the multimeter reveals a short on both of them. Maybe they are connected in parallel and only one is shorted. But I'll have to desolder both of them to make a final decision. Interesting observation is, they both seem to be oxidized, and the pads on one side look to be rotten away as well. Let's desolder the caps now. Just as most of the modern parts, the card was soldered with lead 3 solder, which has a higher melting temperature. This is quite unusual if you work with the retro hardware most of the time, where leaded solder is usually used. The caps are gone now. And as you see, the shorts are gone as well. Here are the two caps, let's check if they are shorted. Yes, this one is shorted. And this one as well. I would say we found the culprit. So my problem currently is that I don't know which values these two guys had. And on the card I didn't find any similar combination where I could make a measurement. So I will make my best guess. These are decoupling caps. And due to the size and usual use case I would say they are something between 1 and 10 microfarads. I have some 4.7 microfarad caps left over from another project, so I'll use them. And we have no shorts here anymore. And on the edge connector as well. Now we have about 800 kilo ohm, a quite good value. Ok, I can remove the wire now. I will clean the contacts with a solder wick as good as I can. But as you see, it will not have that golden color anymore. However, if the card is not working, I'm ok with that. Time to build everything back together. I will clean the GPU with some alcohol and add a fresh thermal paste. Oh, that was too early, I had to put back the metal backplate first. The card is reassembled and back in the mainboard. Power supply is connected, I guess it's time for another test. Hey, and would you look at that, the fans are spinning and the LED on the monitor turned green. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately the 6-pin cable adapter seem not to be sufficient. I guess the card needs an 8-pin cable indeed. It says, please power down and connect the PCI Express power cables for this graphics card. Yeah, that's a pity, but at least the card seems to be alive to some extent. Yes, look at this, the card has two LEDs, which are lighting red if no cables are connected. And if I connect the 6-pin cable, the LED turns green, indicating that the power cable seems to be good. Now, if I insert another 6-pin cable into the 8-pin connector, the LED remains red. 
So I definitely will need another cables, or better, a power supply, which is powerful enough for this card. Theoretically, I could test this card in my AMD Ryzen PC, which I'm using daily, but unfortunately the card is too long for my case, and I don't want to disassemble my PC to get the power supply out of it, so I will think about other solution. Couple of days passed, and I ordered a new power supply, which delivers 550 watts, and even more important, it has the 8-pin PCI Express power cable. It was very cheap, but I hope that it is going to be sufficient to test the graphics card. Here I connected an SSD with Arch Linux and some games and benchmarks on it. Let's connect the power cables. Aha, uh -huh, and as you see, now both LEDs are green, so I hope that now the card will not complain about missing cables anymore. I connect the card to an HDMI capturing device, I think it's better than filming and monitor. Let's turn on. And we have an image! It looks very good so far. However, my Linux setup has only the open source Nouveau drivers, which don't ramp up the clocks. They are too slow and wouldn't stress the graphics card sufficiently. I would like to make some stress tests, and so I'd like to make as much load on the card as possible. Couple of minutes passed, and I installed closed source NVIDIA drivers for 705702. Time to make some tests. First one is going to be Doom 3. As you see, the settings are all to Ultra in Full HD. This system is very slow, it has only an AMD Athlon 64X2 4400 Plus with 4GB of DDR2 RAM. So this card will be probably dramatically held back by the CPU. But for testing it is ok, and this is the fastest PCI Express test board which I have. Yeah, 75 FPS, but the frame rate is not important. I want to test if the GPU works without any glitches, and it looks good so far. Now some more demanding tests. Unigen Heaven Benchmark. To avoid a total slideshow, I think I'll set the quality to high instead of ultra, tessellation to normal and anti-aliasing to let's say 4. Ok, it runs, and it renders the scene properly so far. The frame rate is not amazing, but sufficient for our aim. Temperature is below 60 degrees Celsius so far. I let it running for about 15 to 20 minutes and see if after that it is still looking good. So, after a while the cards remained stable and the temperature was uh, below 65 degrees Celsius, so I ramped up the settings to ultra and left it running for another 20 minutes. As you can see it still renders perfectly, is absolutely stable and the temperature remains about 70 degrees Celsius. Ok, I'd call it a total success. The card is back to life and will hopefully serve good and help to overcome the time of expensive GPUs. The prices are currently really crazy and this GTX 770 is still a capable card if you want to play in Full HD or lower. I hope you enjoyed this repair, even if it was not retro at all. Still, we resurrected some hardware from the dead and this is what it is about. Furthermore, voltage injection is a very useful trick if you need to find a short, independent if the hardware is new or retro. And this is it for today. Please remember that I'm glad about really all of your feedback. And I say thank you and goodbye.